Hello and welcome to uh, another GIMP tutorial. Eli here is uh, my name and I'll um, go over some color corrections. Thanks Jimmy for the request. Um, color corrections are a wide varied topic so there's a lot of things we can cover but uh, I'll stick to some tri tips and tricks and just show you some of the things I do to collect correct rather correct colors with um, with GIMP. So um, what I'm going to do it's going to go over uh, some of the tricks I use. Usually it's um, products, um, product images that require color corrections because you want to make them look clean, you want to look, make them look vibrant, all that sort of stuff. So let's, um, let's work on this guitar, shall we? Uh, I'm going to do a very, very uh, feathered selection, 25. I'm going to go around this over as such. And it is a feathered cut, so I'm, I don't have to be entirely too accurate right now. But I'm going to select all of that, because that's what I want to work on. I'm going to go like that. Okay, select. Now I want to work on it on its own layer, so I'm going to press control, I've made the selection, I'm going to press control C, control V to paste, so it wants to copy, it wants to paste. Right click on the new layer that got created, and then click to new layer. Now that's on its own layer, as you can see. Now there's some yellow tinges there and all that sort of stuff, and you may like that. That may be, that may be fine for you, um, but um, what I find is sometimes a very yellowy image can make it look dirty. So we reduce the a quick fix is to reduce the saturation. Go to hue and saturation and just bring it down. That starts to look a little bit cleaner. Now there are a lot of fingerprints on this, so again, what you could do, I'm gonna uh, just merge that and lay it down. What you could do is um, do another soft selection. Let's say I'm just going to focus on on this area here exclusively so I can show rather than waste too much time around this cut but I'm just going to select this little area around here up until this lighter part comes in and I'll just stick to this area. This is just for um, demonstration. Actually let me go around here. I may as well complete it. So, I've got the selection around, all around here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to blur this. This is just to clean it up a little bit. Say so blur. This is to get rid of all these fingerprints that you can see around here. That They don't look very flattering at all. Um, so, the probably, the, the, before I start blurring, I'll probably just um, do a quick few quick clones around there and there and get rid of some of the obvious, let's say the obvious markings. Um, you know, as such. But, um, yeah, once you've got rid of some obvious marks, then we can focus on uh, doing a bit of a blur. So, i do that. Then I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to do that again. And maybe even again. Okay. Um, the fact that I've got the selection prevents the blur from leaking out too far. And that's a handy thing because um, you kind of don't want that blur getting too far. The more you repeat the blur, the more it's going to keep doing that. Um, it bleeds over the edge. Uh, so anyway, um, that's removed um, somewhat some of the um, repeat it one more time okay and now now it's looking I'm gonna put that on its own layer it's looking a little bit uh, unrealistic because that's clearly been blurred and it's not blurred here so we'll do this is a really really important trick what we do what we do is we actually add noise back in and that starts to make it look a lot more realistic again so let me zoom in and show you a few things I'm gonna bring chroma down usually just leave the lightness and then you have a little bit of blur, um, noise and then you add a, an ever so slight amount of uh, blur back into it and I mean a little tiny bit so let me go to zero and zoom in so I can compare it to the surrounding and go up a little bit maybe to about 0.5 Okay, about there. Now you can see the noise here is almost identical to the noise there. And um, 
In this case, I kind of overdid it here, but if you if you were to just look over here, you could see that that is almost like a clean version of a guitar around here compared to that. So let me cut this. Um, I'm going to undo, 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 undo. Go back to the original before I made the selection. Paste that in there. But now because I've pasted it over the um, old effect there, or over the old image there, what I can do is um, use the arrays and just clear out some of those areas that are looking obviously fake, particularly around the edges where it's touching these sorts of things, like around there and around there. And then it starts to look clean, but less dirty. Um, so that's that's one of the tricks I do. I didn't do it perfectly, like I, I could have done a little bit more cloning, but that's just to show you some of that some of that trick. Okay, now merge this. Let's go over a couple of more things. Um, if you're doing photography, depending on the style of image that you want, usually um, you want either a really high contrast and sometimes you want a matte finish. The Levels will show you where the information of the of the image is. So this is the light part. I believe that's the light part. So if I move that in, it darkens it. That's the light part. That's the dark part information. So if I cut, so by moving this triangle inwards, I am cutting out, effectively clipping all of the information that is on this side of the graph. That's where the information is, light to dark. And I'm clipping it. So getting rid of sorry, I beg your pardon, I am clipping the dark part. The triangle gives you that uh, that um, information. It's a dark triangle, that's a gray and that's a white. So I'm clipping the dark and as it goes more and more in it starts to darken the rest of the image until the lightest parts of the images are left. Okay, so that's what that does. And this does the opposite, only the light parts. Now, generally speaking, in most cases, if the image, if the information of the image is contained between these two, you don't want to move them. Um, however, if it's very much inside here, then you have space to move this in without cutting any part of the image. That will add contrast. It's a good way to add contrast without losing any detail or information of, of the image. Let me give you an example. Suppose I add brightness here. I make this bright. Now, this is a good trick to give your, or even if I do con low contrast, this is reducing a little bit of contrast or, reduce, or increasing a little bit of lightness and so on, is a good way to give your images a matte finish. So that's a non-gloss matte finish. Now, what has that done to the information in our image? Well, let me show you. If I go back to levels, you will see that there are some flat points added in here. That's all it did. It's added some flat point in here, meaning the information has been shoved inside and it's given me some room to push this in and bring it back to where it was. And same with here. Right, so that's pretty much where the image was. Um, let me go back to, okay, you see the difference? This brings in, bring this in, and it creates that sort of image. Take it out, creates that matte looking finish again. So in and out. As long as all the information is contained between this triangle and this triangle, you can bring them in as much as possible, but don't bring them in too much, otherwise it clips. Let me show you what happens if you clip. So if there isn't a lot of information, meaning the graph is quite low in this area, you can bring it in safely. But if it's very high, bring it in any more than that and you start to lose information. What I mean by losing information is the dark areas have clipped, meaning that that's all become, certain parts of this curtain have become all black and entirely black. And the detail in that curtain is irrecoverable. So if I click OK, it's gone. So that's just pure black in certain areas. 
um, it's clipped. Now that's helped the guitar here. Um, sometimes that's sometimes that's a handy little um, tool to use for such reasons. Look how clean the guitar looks. I mean, we did soften the guitar earlier and pl applied some tricks, but that's kind of doing it justice there. Now, let's go back to levels. You will see here that because we clipped all that information, the graph here has gone very, very high because it's shoved all of that dark detail all into one area, and that's here on this extreme. If I was to do the same here, you can see how it's starting to look. It's um, killing a lot of the detail there. But if I go back to levels now, you can see it's um, there's a line going up there. Um, so we that's not that's not too ideal. So you don't want to do that, or you don't, at least you don't want to overdo it. But in some cases, it helps. I, I believe we've just improved this image. Now, you may think that this image um, is a little too red or too warm. Um, GIMP has a really kind of handy tool called color temperature, which really, and, and most graphics programs have this, but you can quickly adjust the temperature and make it cool or make it more warm and all that sort of stuff. So that, um, in the old days, I used to just use the hue saturation for that and I used to move away from the red if I needed to. And um, Or alternatively, if there's too much yellow in an image um, or too much red, let's say there's too much yellow, pick the yellow, and create, put the overlap all the way up, then reduce the saturation. This reduces the saturation by targeting yellow only. Now, if I do that, look what it's done. I think that's a... You don't want to do too much, but it's helped the skin look a little more porcelain as opposed to... Um, if I put that all the way up, well, it does help the hair, but I think it helps the skin going the other way. So, I'm just going to do it a little bit of that. Now, we can look at the red as well, the red channel. Click on the red channel. Make sure the overlap is all the way up. And again, I can reduce that all the way down. And look what that's done to the hair. So I can put all that up. I'm going to put that up for the hair, but I'm going to put that down. So the hair maintains the red, but the skin um, starts to look smoother. Go back to the red. Put that up again. It's the lipstick starting to come out. Okay, there you go. So... You can isolate colors and work on colors individually um, using the hue saturation tool and the um, overlap. Now, um, if I felt that the reds were too bright, again, I could say overlap, um, go choose the red channel and reduce the brightness on just the red. Careful with that one. You won't always get the best results um, doing that. So I would probably use that one sparingly. I actually prefer um, to adjust brightness and darkness. I prefer to use either the brightness or the levels that I just showed you before. I find that it's a safer way to go about things. Okie dokie. Um, well, you know, and then saturation is kind of covered in hue and saturation. Um, exposure is a really kind of handy one, but again, it lets you, um, that's a good way to, Kind of continued the guitar starts to look very shiny when you when you start doing that but that's just killing again if i did that and then i show you what it does on levels it's again pushing everything against the left here it's clipping all of the black so that you can see that the curtain now is entirely black um it's something that can be achieved using just levels as well and curves is probably a, a way to fine tune the levels a, a little more so so you can you have a little bit more control uh, but I suggest you play with this one before you um, get too involved in the in the level side of things uh, but you can get some interesting effects with this that you cannot get with um, levels alone so curves will give you a little bit more control um, over, over areas of the spectrum other than that um, there's some handy tools here for posterize uh, which kind of limits the number of colors as such and you can get some cool effects with that generally for posterize the smaller number here the better um, when you start going too high it starts to look like the original image anyway but when you're on the lower ones you, you get these sorts of cool effects as such 
And um, if something, if an object is meant to be a specific color, let's say, let's say this jacket. Now, if I zoom in on this jacket, I can see that the, it's, it's got a bit of noise um, and it's got a bit of color noise. That means some of these spots are red, some of them are green slightly and all that sort of stuff. But if I make a selection around this jacket, as such, just doing a quick one, right? I was going to show you something on this side without doing the whole thing, just doing a small part of it. Um, all right, you talked me into it. I'm just going to complete this very, very, very quickly here as such. Okay. Okay, at least it's just there, just to kind of complete it and I'll make it look all good. Now, if I, uh, I'm going to copy paste. Um, I'm going to alpha to selection. So it's, again, it's only working on the selection, even though the, um, it's making sure I'm not kind of doing anything else. Um, now, Colorize is a tool that I use for color correction quite often, actually, because it, it will, by choosing Colorize, you can obviously, as the name suggests, uh, colorize in a selection to be a very specific color. Now, in this case, um, we're going to say Colorize. And I'm going to temporarily switch the preview off. I'm going to choose this to select the color. This is the target color. So I'm going to select the color to be this. Over here in the lightness, I don't want to make it any light. I'm just going to say, all right, just make it, keep the light the same, the lightness the same, but go for this color. Now, if I turn preview back on, okay. Now that's a subtle difference, but let me show you the difference. Before, after, before, after. So before, there was a variety of colors there. Take a note of this red speck here. There's a, some green, some reds, and some lots of noise. Over this, this helped clean up a lot of that noise. So the jacket here now looks much, much cleaner than the jacket here. So if you want to clean up an image, um, one of the tricks is to just colorize it. It's similar to what I did with the guitar earlier where it was um, where I made the where I made it just black and white because I got rid of all the color. In this case over here, I got rid of all of the other colors that were not part of the jacket's primary kind of um, color scheme going on because I selected that specifically and applied it to the rest of it so that it was all one color. You can see here where it's where the selection is missing, how it's kind of a bit browny, and that really gives, tells you the difference. Um, so here it looks clean, and here it does not, up the top here. So that's the, my final trick in the book. Um, I use Colorize to clean up products, images. So if a product has three different colors, let's say it's a beach ball, has white, red, and blue, then you can select the blue part and colorize it to blue. You can select the red part, colorize it to red. And, and desaturate the white area, and then you've got a really clean beach ball. Hope that answers some questions um, that you may have had. Um, leave a comment. If you've got any further questions, let me know. Thank you.